January 6th, 2021 is a day that most Americans will never forget, and I am included. That's the day of the insurrection, the alleged attempt, or not even alleged, but that's what this video is about, attempt to overturn the presidential election between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And today, we're gonna get into a part of the psychology of that day because one of the leaders of that event, an organization called Proud Boys, the leader of that event, a man named Enrico Tario, I think is how you pronounce it. He's been convicted for a while, but he just got sentenced. He's got the longest sentence yet, 22 years, and we're gonna talk about it. But first, I'm Elliot Connie, I'm a licensed psychotherapist, and here in the Therapist React series, I talk about the psychological aspects of popular news stories and pop culture events. And I want you to learn from them, I want you to gain information and knowledge, and this is an important story, so I wanted to cover it. I wanna talk about my day on January 6th, 2021. I was sitting at my computer and there was a television uh, kind of in the next room, but I could see it from where I was sitting. And I was talking to this employee, kind of a very sensitive conversation. We were in the process of letting this employee know that she was no longer gonna be working for us. And the employee screams like, oh my gosh, they're storming the Capitol. And I look at that screen and I see something that I never thought I would see, which is people just from rushing in to the Capitol, breaking windows, destroying things in an attempt to overthrow the election. If you remember, Mike Pence was supposed to certify the election and Donald Trump had been pressuring him not to do that, thinking that in not certifying the election, the transfer of power from one president to the next would not happen. And these people were all bought into this idea and they participated at an event called the Stop the Steal rally where lots of people spoke, including Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump, and then they went and stormed the Capitol. Who hides evidence? Criminals hide evidence, not honest people. So over the next 10 days, we get to see the machines that are crooked, the ballots that are fraudulent, and if we're wrong, we will be made fools of. Well, I'll never forget the sight of seeing senators running from their for their lives. To this day, I honestly believe if they had caught in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, if they had caught Mike Pence, if they had caught a few kind of high-ranking Democrats, that there would have been harm brought to them. I remember watching a particular security guard like being one man against this mob running down the hall, later realizing he was a hero because he was guiding them away from the Senate floor. I just remember being blown away by all of this. And then as the years come, they arrest lots of people. The FBI, I remember seeing a report. I live in North Texas, that's where my home is. And the FBI released a report saying most of the arrests uh, came from North Texas, right around where I live. Which, by the way, I made a video recently where I addressed the lyrics in the Try That in a Small Town. And people got really upset about the video, but I stand by everything I said in that video. The people saying like, try that in a small town, they came from small towns and did the acts of violence that they're claiming don't happen in small towns. My point in that video is violence happens everywhere and people commit violence from everywhere. And this idea of try that in a small town, it talks about who's insiders and outsiders. So if you're a city person, you're in this town, try that and, and there's gonna be consequences. Well, ask Ralph Yarl what it's like to be in a small town, knock on someone's door and be viewed as an outsider. So that's why this kind of language is so dangerous. But I digress, back to January 6th. Now in the subsequent years, lots of people have been arrested and tried and convicted. And this is by far, Enrico Tario's conviction is by far the conviction that led to the longest sentence. And he said something, he hadn't said anything publicly. He said something in his sentencing hearing to the judge where he said he regrets his actions on that day. He said, I'm not uh, a criminal. His lawyer described him as a misguided patriot. He said he's no longer gonna be involved in politics and he regrets all that he did and said leading up to this event. And I thought about that for a minute and I, I, and I had two thoughts. Number one, regret. Regret is a very, very difficult thing to live with. So we need to make sure we're behaving in ways that don't lead to regret, which is a 100% impossibility. We're, we're all gonna do things that we regret. We're all gonna say things that we regret. It's just part of life. 
And when we do something that we regret, we need to atone for it. We need to speak up about it, like Enrico did. He stood up in court and said, I regret my action that led up to this event. I regret my actions on that day. He, he absolutely expressed that. But then the other thing I thought was, well, are the people going to hear this? Because there are still people who believe this election was stolen in spite of no evidence to that. Like, I've seen people not acknowledge that this was a violent, deadly day, even though people died and people experienced violence. This party, the people who were storming the Capitol that day claimed back the blue, but it was a ton of police officers that were attacked. Some of them have lifelong consequences and some had passed away. Not only is it important to understand we have to own and express regret, but we also have to open our minds to new information that may be contrary to something that we previously thought. These men, mostly men, are standing up in court saying, I believed a lie and my belief in that lie caused me to take action for which I am now going to prison. Another leader of the Proud Boys was sentenced to prison for 15 years, another one 17 years. This guy, the leader, 22 years. Like these people are standing up acknowledging like it was a lie I bought into and as a consequence, I did a whole bunch of things that I now regret. We have to do a good job as people of acknowledging there is now new information. You know, it is very, very difficult for human beings to admit that they're wrong. I really believe that a lot of people who like went down this path, one of the things that's hard for them to do now is realize they were duped, realize they were tricked, realize that they had fallen for something that is not true. But that's the important thing. We have to be able to do it. It shouldn't take being in a courtroom with a judge in order to acknowledge, I believed something that turned out not to be true. It should not take the extreme circumstances that are being faced by Mr. Tario to lead to people admitting that they were wrong. We should be able to admit that we're wrong. That doesn't mean you're still not a conservative. It doesn't mean you're not a right-wing Republican. All of those things are fine. You get to have your own political views. But we all need to live in a world we acknowledge what happened on January 6th was wrong and can never happen again. The judge said that 300 million Americans almost woke up on January 7th to a crisis in our democracy where the transfer of power did not happen peacefully where the transfer of power did not happen at all, where we, we would be in a, a situation, this is exactly what the judge said, where we would not know who the president was and would not know how we would find that out. We can't go back to that place. I don't care what you thought politically, and I don't care which, whether you thought the election was stolen or not. We all have to acknowledge that going down this path led us to trouble. It is shocking to me that we do not. The psychological ability to believe something just to protect your own psyche is part of the human experience. But so too is having the, the strength and ability to acknowledge that perhaps I was wrong. And I need you guys to acknowledge that. Perhaps you were wrong. Perhaps you were wrong in what you thought and it led you down a difficult path. If Mr. Tario can do it, so can you. I know some of the things I said in this video is gonna upset some people. And let me tell you, I don't care. It's the truth and it's the real psychology and why we do what we do. But I still would love to hear your thoughts. So please leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this video. But be nice, there is no reason to talk. People have just, you can disagree. You can disagree with passion, you can disagree with anger. But be nice, be kind, be respectful. Let's be together. We don't have to say things out of hate. So thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your comments. I want to interact with you. Please like this video, share this video. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you get a notification every single time we post a new video, which is every day, Monday through Friday. Thank y'all and I can't wait to see you in the next video.